morning everybody um this is kim and we're going to do another palmer clay tutorial and uh my view is a little different and i wanted to tell you about that me and my husband we are on our way to florida <clears throat> and we're right now in georgia we've been here uh we spent a week visiting my brother in georgia uh, actually about three or four days and then we come a little farther south uh, close to probably about 50 miles away from Tallahassee um, <clears throat> and we're at the little park there's a lake here it, it's just a really nice little park so um, we've been here and uh, we'll leave out here on Saturday um, and then we'll go on down to Florida so setup is a little different than it has been um, so I'm hoping it's better uh, you, you should be able to see more uh, because of the view the the angle in which I have uh, the camera set up so hopefully this will work better for us um, so what I wanted to tell you is we're going to do this uh, polymer clay tutorial. In this one, uh, I will probably, depending on the time, I'll probably just do, um, I'll show you what I use. Uh, we'll actually m make some things. Um, I may show you the finished piece afterwards. If not, we'll do a part two with the finished pieces. Uh, and we'll make jewelry out of it. But right now, uh, on this one, the concentration is going to be on the technique and what I'm doing. Um, it's a little bit, it's not exactly what I did in the first one that you couldn't see. Um, but it has, uh, the things that we're going to use is going to be mica powders. Um, we're going to use some translucent clay, or yeah, translucent liquid clay. Uh, and then translucent clay. Uh, we're going to use some foil flakes, copper foil flakes, um, and we'll get a little more detail into this when I do this. Um, and a couple of alcohol inks. <coughs> and um, so I hope you like it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it comes out because I've not done this, used this technique before. And I wanted to a couple things i wanted to apologize for being off camera uh, that is not an intentional thing um and as i've told you before i've really worked on trying to to change that i hope this will help us get to that point a little bit better with the different camera angle but i did want to apologize and i love what jody's doing i love what uh, some of the other ladies on here is doing and I, I just, I really do appreciate that. And again, I learn a lot from these videos as well. So uh, even as I do some of the polymer, polymer clay work, you know, I learn things as we go as well. So I appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate your views. Please make sure you like, share, and comment. Again, I can't stress the comments enough because that's the only way I know what you want to see. Um, and I would appreciate that. So, uh, we have the word for today. It says, May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord. Psalm 33, 22. And this is a great word for us. And... I just want to encourage you in this new year to seek God, uh, to seek the things of God and what he would have you do for your life and what maybe he wants you to do in this new year. And one of the things that I'm really focusing on, um, you all know about my ministry I have, Agape Family Nurturing Center, and I'm making some significant changes to our programs and it is to help lift up God and uh, obviously everything I do I try to give God all the glory and all the praise because he's 
he he's the one that works through me so I continue to do that and in 2024 I'm really excited we've got some great things coming up um, as I've told you before I work with parents um, not all parents but the majority of the parents I'll work with are parents who have had their kids removed from the home my goal is to help those parents not just get their kids back but that they are <clears throat> making strides in their lives to better their lives and their children's lives and honestly to be real honest I think the only way that that can happen is if you seek God and you understand the love that God has for you I think there's significant changes when you receive Christ as your personal personal Savior and he brings power into your life and thus for it changes everything it changes how you do things it, it changes the way you treat people uh, the words you say the kindness and you know this word uh, for today may your unfailing love rest upon us O Lord Psalms 33 22 and I think that is huge because here's the thing and this is what I, I tell a lot of my parents until you realize how much God loves you you have a really hard time loving others it's hard to love even your children if you don't love yourself and the way that I came to love myself is knowing the love of Christ knowing how much he loved me and knowing that I could give that back to others but until I realized the magnitude of his love unconditional agape love I couldn't do anything in my life I barely woke up and survived days. I had to have, I had to have his love inside of me. Because then too, I, I don't expect the things from other people that I used to expect. Because now I have a God who is my higher power. I have Jesus Christ in my life who shows me everything I need to do Holy Spirit leads and guides me every single day and that's my prayer and that's my prayer for you this year is that you would allow the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct your path today and every day of 2024 and that he might use you to love on others and to show love to others because we I don't know if you have noticed <laughs> I'm sure you have but we're living in a world where there are a lot of lost people, a lot of hurting people, a lot of people that are in pain. And I truly believe it's our job to love on other people. It's our job to show Christ to others. And we do that by showing love to others, showing what God has given us. So... Thank you for listening to me. Um, but I have a patient, a, a, a passion for Christ. I know what he's done in my life. And I know what he can do in your life and others' lives. And that's what drives me. So, thank you for listening. We're going to get to it. I'm going to pause this, turn everything around, get everything set up. And we'll come back and we'll start the project. So I look forward to doing this with you. And again, please comment. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Eight. Translucent squares. Um, I believe these are... I got me some new... Because I don't have a pasta machine where I'm at, so... I'm having to hand roll everything. Uh, this one is three, I think it's about a three millimeter, you know, about a three millimeter piece. Um, so that is those. Okay, and I've got 
eight of these. And then I have very thin pieces of translucent. And again, this is all translucent clay that I'm using. It's Primo. Um, and this is a really thin piece. I don't know if you can see that or not, but just as thin as you can roll it is what I have it. So um, it might be, I would say, less than a millimeter. Yeah, it's less than a, like maybe a half a millimeter, something like that. And I have nine pieces of that cut out. Um, the squares are about one and three quarters inches um, for each square is how I've got them cut. So, um, so we've got, again, we've got eight pieces of the three millimeter, three millimeter and nine pieces of the thin, which is probably maybe a half a millimeter. I'm going to be using copper flakes. And as I do this, I'm going to start putting things out of the way so I have room to work. Move my table up a little bit. Um, copper flakes. We're going to use some liquid Sculpey translucent, and that is just to help have everything stick to one another once we get started. I have, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not. I have Pearl X Micro Pearl. Um, this is a white a Micro Pearl, a pearly color. Um, this is Jacar, and this is a turquoise mica powder. Again, these are all mica, mica powders. I found this. Um, these are, I found this at Walmart because I wanted a copper color. Um, so these were for bombs. Bath bombs. Then I have some black mica powder. Would we'll use a little bit of that. I have a couple of color. Actually, Believe it or not, I got these mica powders. Um, it came with a set. There's several in the set. But this came uh, from Dollar Tree. So we'll see how these work. I've never used these. Uh, this is a blue. This is a green. And we'll see how that works. Then we have also mica powders. Again, these are all from the... Pearlex collection. This is spring green. This is lavender. And all these are Pearlexes. And this is a true blue. So we're going to use these. And then for my um, alcohol inks, I have Pool from Ranger. And I have Vineyard from Ranger. So I'm using a mix of blues and greens and purples. <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping this will turn out um, sort of like a abalone. Um, I am going to use the copper flakes, uh, which I don't know that abalone has the copper copper look, but that's what I'm using on this. But it, it kind of reminds me of that with these colors. So that's what we're using. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, again, I'm going to pause this, get some things opened, and we'll start working. Then also you're going to need some kind of roller. Uh, I have a blade that I'm using. Um, I have a little spoon that I could dip my mica powders out if I need to. <clears throat> I have my tweezers, my tuss, uh, trusty tweezers. We've talked about those before. So these are the tools we're going to use. Um, I may use this. I'll probably use these to um, burnish the clay. And what else do I need? Okay, so then I'm going to use... 
a paintbrush, a real soft paintbrush in order to dip into my powders and brush those on my pieces. So you'll need a paintbrush for that. And I think that's it. Um, and then we'll have some cutters, uh, cutters of your choices that you'll use. So again, I'm going to pause this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all my mica powders out. So we're just going to start putting them on here. Um, I think I'm going to use, we're going to do this first. I need to put a little bit more. There we go. All right, that's good. All right, so there's some blue. We'll put it on this one since we've already got a little blue on here. Okay. And we'll put a little bit up on this one. Waste not, want not. I'll try to use as much as I can so that. I just love the sheen that Mica Powders has. And I hope, again, you can see this. I think this setup. I've tried it. It seems to be working pretty well. So, all right, I am going to put the top on this. Let's try some green. Actually, I think I'm going to use, I think this was like called spring green. I like to use the tops because I want to get every, again, I like to use what we got here. And I'm not putting these on in any certain way. I'm just coloring this clay with the mica powders. Some of them might have a little bit less. Some of them might have a little bit more. I'm just playing with it. There's that. I'll put the top back on it. And again, if I need more, I can always get it out again. I'm just trying to prevent myself from making too much of a mess. I'm going to add a little bit of this purple. This is, like I said, this is a lavender, which is a little bit on the light side. And I don't know how many of you all do you know, polymer clay and all, but there is something that is just so cool about using luscious things and this the micro powders are so pretty and have such a nice sparkle to them i hope this turns out as nice as i want it to um because i i just i love the idea of things that shimmer. And these are so pretty. All right. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to use this blue, which is a little bit deeper, darker blue. We're going to put that on some of these pieces over here. And again, I'm not doing this in any order. I'm just doing it. Uh, this is the true blue. Okay, so I'm back. Sorry about that. So I have, um, again, I'm just putting some of the darker on these pieces. And just painting them up any way you want to. Okay. So I'm going to put this, take this out of the way, put that up. I think I want a little more purple. Kind of left that out for a reason. Um, I like purple. Scoot that to the side. Let's see. I thought I had another green. Oh, I do have another green. How did I? Did I miss that green? I guess I did. No. Okay, I've already put that on. All right. So let's let's try this other green I have here. Um, it's a little bit lighter. Ooh, it's kind of like a goldish green got more shimmer in it than I thought it would have. I kind of like that. It's kind of pretty. Mm, that is pretty. it has like a gold which kind of surprises me it has like a gold glimmer to it I'm not sure how well this is coming up on the camera but it's real pretty mm, okay Now I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put, um, this is a turquoise blue, let me use this, this is a turquoise blue, well it says turquoise blue, so let's put a little turquoise blue on here, see how that, that's pretty, I like that. Okay, and then, where did it go? Oh, then I'm going to put some of this copper. 
Let's see if we can get this copper out of here. There we go. It's a really small little package of it. Oh, we shall see. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me put some down here. Ooh, I like this. Now, you have to remember that um, the clay only ho holds <laughs> so much mica powders, okay? So, I'm brushing some of this excess off here. I do like these. I like these colors. I should have. Let me try this. Oh, let's see if I can get a little more copper or get some copper because I really like this copper. This is. Oops. Copper is really pretty. I'm going to clean these off a little bit, get the excess mica powders off of them, and then uh, we'll start stacking them. So, all right, I'm going to put the tops back on my mica powders and the only one I haven't used yet is the black and we're going to use just a little bit of that not a whole lot but I'll show you what we're going to do with that I'm going to put the tops back on these okay mica powders set them to the side take them now let me uh, I'm gonna pause this a minute I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then I'll come right back okay so we're back we're gonna start stacking these no particular order we're just gonna start stacking them so we'll use this one first then I'm gonna put a thin sheet if I can grab it of the translucent Okay, wait a minute. Let me get me some, because it's not going to stick very well. So we're going to do some translucent. I'm going to put a little bit out on my glass thing there. Okay, we don't need a whole lot, just a little bit to kind of help everything stick to, help this clay stick to itself, okay? That's all we're going to do. Alright. Alright. Kind of use it as a, a, an adhesive. Okay. So we're going to take a thin piece of our translucent clay. Okay. Get the... Try to get the air bubbles out of this the best we can. Okay. All right. There's that. 
Now I'm going to take and I'm going to put some of this copper foil on here. And I'm going to use our trusty tweezers that I love so much. I'm going to put that on there. Kind of get it to meld with it just a little bit. And like I said, I love these tweezers. They are they're great for using in all kinds of projects. I use them on a regular basis with just about everything I do. Now this doesn't have to be completely covered up. Okay, I'm just... Putting it where I can. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put another piece on. And again, no order. I think I want to get some of this copper in here. Uh, maybe put down a little bit of this translucent. Okay, we're going to put that right there. Then we're going to take another of our thin sheets. Put a little more translucent on that. And again, if a little bit of copper, there's a little bit of copper on that, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and I'm going to put this right here. Now, on this one, I'm going to put just a little bit of the black, not much, a little bit of the black on here, mica powder. I guess we need a little bit more than that, but just a little bit. of the black mica powder. Okay. Okay, there's that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more of my Translucent. I have to get some more out here. All right. A little bit more of my translucent clay because I'm going to put copper on top of this and then I'm going to put some of the flakes on it. Just like that. And a little bit more. All right. Then I'm going to put another one of these on here. Let's go with this one. Okay, I'm going to put another thin piece on here. And this time we're going to use, I'm going to use more for, um, copper. And we're going to use some of the um, alcohol inks on this. Pause it, but the alcohol ink will have to dry a little bit. And I'll pause it and I'll come back and we'll finish it up. 
and I'll do that twice. Um, but I don't have a hot gun or anything like that, hot air gun. Um, so I'm just going to let it dry. And I'll come back when it's dry. Alright, so for this step, I'm going to put on my glove for the alcohol ink. And again, I hope you're seeing all this. I think you do. This angle, I think that's much better. Alright, so we have um, the pool and we have the purple. So I'm going to use the pool first. And I'm only put like three drops. One, two, three. Alright. Then I'm going to put on three of these. One, two, three. Now, alcohol inks can be extremely messy, so when you're using it, I would suggest you put on old clothes because uh, otherwise you might get it all over you. So there's a little bit here on my glass top. Um, so it splatters. It can splatter. Let's put it to you that way. All right. Brush this in a little bit. Let's see, do I want that brush? Let's do this one. And I'm just going to thin it out a little bit so it won't take so long to dry. But I'm going to need to put a couple more of the blue on here. One, two, maybe a third one. Okay. And we'll let that set a minute and dry. And then we'll come back. So I'm going to pause this and I'll be right back. Okay, I think this is pretty dry. Um, it's, it's still a little wet, but I think it'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I actually am going to take a blade. And I forgot to tell you where you put the flakes you need to cut down just a little bit so we're not going to cut all the way through this okay but we're going to put some lines in it okay what i need to use is a back of a blade and just kind of scrunch it back up again all right let me get and I have alcohol ink on me. I guess I should have put two gloves on instead of one. All right. So I guess I'll do that now that I've got it all over me. Um, it is messy. So you do need to wear gloves. So let me go ahead and put this on. And we will continue. So, <clears throat> let me clean off my blade. Alright. We're going to put a little more of this liquid clay on here. I, I have a hard time doing this because I like to fill my clay. So wearing gloves is not conducive to what I like to do, but it is what it is. Okay. Whoops. Come on. All right. There we go. I'm pulling up my... All right. So we're going to put on another piece. Let's use this one up here. 
put that on. And we're going to put some of this on. And the reason why, again, we use this transparent clay is because it doesn't want to, these little thin sheets will not want to stick to the micro powders. All right, so I've got that on there. I'm going to use, take my tweezers, pull some more of this. copper foil out I've got to take this off okay all right put some over here So I've got copper foil there. And then I think on this one, um, well, just to put another one of these on here. So that that sticks. Now, um, one more of these, and I'm gonna put a little bit. This is gonna be my last of the black. We're gonna use a little bit of the black maca powders. And this is more of a it's black but it's not going to be like a dark black it's almost like a shimmery gray like a charcoal gray or something like that i mean it is black but it's not black so all right all right and that's all of that color that's all the mica powders we're going to be using So there's that. And put the top back on my Yeah. The black is should have cleaned that side off, but it's okay. Alright. Clean this up just a little bit. We're gonna put A little bit more of this. Uh, coat that. We're going to have a nice little sandwich here. Now, I'm going to take another one of these. Put that on top. Put another little thin piece on. Now, on this thin piece. Whoops. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, did I take that one and cut it? No, I put, see, messed up. That's all right, we'll put this on here like this. Again, what we were supposed to do is to cut through this. And what this does is just pull color down through the stack, okay? Now, I'm going to put this other thin thing on here. 
I'm putting more foil on. And with this, we're going to do some more alcohol ink. And I'm going to put more of the blue. I think I'm just going to use the blue on this because I put a lot of purple in the other. So I think I'll just use blue on this. My pool. Um, so let me show you. We're going to take this. I'm going to take I've got alcohol ink. I forgot to tell you this. I got 91% alcohol ink. We're going to squirt this just a little bit. And what this is going to do is help our alcohol ink one spread two three and four actually I'm, there we go and that's all that that i'm going to use now i'm going to thin this out i'm going to use my brush over here and i'm going to just kind of make it thin thin it out a little bit so that it dries quickly. Okay. And I'm going to pause it one more time. Let this dry, then we're going to come and we're going to slice it a little bit with our blade. Okay, I'm going to clear my blade off. And then we will um, we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, and we'll put it on pause. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Um, it's pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm taking this blade. It is on the back. Uh, the sharp side is on the other end. So this is the, the blunt side. And we're just going to take this and go down. Okay. Again, I'm going to have to clean off this blade. I'm going to put this. I have wet wipes close by because I'm messy. And this is messy stuff. So there we go. Again, just clean my blade up a little bit so it doesn't have that on it so now I'm gonna take put my glove back on and we are gonna mush this back together And then we have I'll take my glove back off, put a little bit more of this on here. Okay, which is my translucent clay to kind of hold it together. We're going to put another one of these on there. Okay. Another thin piece. Um, I 
I'm using both hands, which normally I don't. I mean, I am a righty, and I usually <laughs> use my right hand. Okay, so we're going to put this on here, which is our liquid clay, okay? All right, and then we're going to put the translucent, thin translucent on top of that. All right. This time, I'm not going to put any of the flakes on there. Actually, you know, I am going to put flakes on that, I think. Um, one last stack of this. And I think I'm going to do one last... Um, one last hoorah of the alcohol ink. And I'm just going to use the pull on this one. Get a little more blue in there. Okay. All right. So, and then I'm going to pause it one last time. I was only going to put it on twice, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, I'm going to put the translucent on, or the pull alcohol inks on one more time. And we'll let this dry. I'll come back and we'll definitely finish up. Okay. Be right back. Okay. I think this is um, dried pretty well. We're going to cut through one more time. And again, we're just doing this to get a little bit of a, hopefully a fracture in this. Okay. This is going to be our last cut through, and then we're going to start putting it together. Wipe off my blade. All right. Oops. All right. Now. One more, uh, our last piece that goes on here, okay? We're going to cut through this. I'm going to wipe this blade off one last time because we're done using it. I'm going to take this glove off. And yes, I'll probably get messy, but that's okay. I'm going to put some of that back on there. Let's see. That goes this way. Nope. Goes this way. All right, I'm going to clean up, I'm going to take my wet wipe and clean up this um, translucent that I have on my table. Clean that up a little bit. All right, I love these colors. I just, I don't know how this is going to turn out. We'll see. Okay. Hopefully it will come out good. 
Now, I did use the translucent, but it still wants to come apart. I'm just telling you. It's going to do that. You just have to work with it to, to let it, for it to want to go back together. So you just keep working it. to roll it to pull it back together okay And it looks like a mess, and that's okay. All right. You just have to work it in. Okay. I think this is going to be real pretty. all that back on there. And I think our viewpoint is better when doing this because we can uh, at this angle because we can again you can see more of what I'm doing. I'm going to take my blade. Oh, wrong blade. I'm going to take this blade. And we're going to kind of push it back together. To get it a little more squared. Okay. So that we're going to cut cut it in half in a minute but I just want to make sure that it's all together first before we cut it and stack it I like this I like translucent clay it it just makes everything so pretty and gives everything such and mica powders oh my goodness if y'all could see the shimmer <laughs> But this house, it's so pretty. Okay. So that's what it's looking like. That's the back. So let's cut it. Let me roll it just a little bit more. And we're going to cut it in half. Like so. Let's see. I'm going to, I'm not very good about eyeballing it. So we're going to do it this way. And we're going to cut it about right there. Close to half anyway. And there's some prettiness in there if you can see that. We're going to stack it. Okay. 
and again like I said it it'll stick together even though you saw how it was falling apart and it will begin to come together once you start working it okay so if it looks like it's not going to do it it will you just have to work with it so I'm going to get this to a, a block This is, I think it's going to be the prettiest one I've ever done. I just love the way, and you can see the um, alcohol inks showing up so pretty in this. And the mica powders will just give it such a nice shine. So, I, I, I think I had told you I don't care too much for resin. I think... I'm going to do a tester on this batch and put a little resin on my finished project to see. I'll have to open all the windows up, but um, I might do a tester on this. I do have my triple thick here, but so what I was telling you, so we cut it <laughs> We cut this, when we were cutting it, slicing it, making our indentions, we did it this way, okay? Okay, so this this is the top of it. So when I was telling you on the other one that you couldn't see very well, uh, that I cut it the wrong way, um, I cut it like this way. But what we actually want to do, because we have put the cuts in this, From the top we want to actually put it on its side and slice it this way and we will be able to see uh, some of the fracturing that we did so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let this rest just a second oh I love this this is so pretty oh my gosh I wish you could see it um hope it's it's pretty when we cut into it and that's the thing you never know what's going to turn out uh, the next thing i might do is a makumegane with you um we'll see but um all right so here is our log and i'm going to this is the top so i'm going to turn it on its side And we're going to cut down, actually, where's my other blade? I like this other blade. Okay. look at this see that all right I'll do one more this way and then okay I'll save that piece now you can ooh Okay, make sure you look front and backs because you might find something on one of them that you like more than the other. I think I like that one. Okay, I need to kind of stretch this one out a little bit because it kind of got 
mushed up. Okay, we're going to do those, I think. Now, I don't think we have... Uh, let me put them up here like this. We'll see how we go. Okay, so we're back. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can get these pieces to cohere together. Be cohesive. Um, hmm. Okay. Trying to meld them all into one piece. get this back side looks pretty good see get my markers out and see how thick this is all right this is um Okay, these, this is three millimeter. I think that's what we'll do. We'll do it, make it a three millimeter piece. Okay. Because it seems to be close to that. Again, making a mess of it. Don't do what I do. Make sure you use your blade to pick it up. Okay. And I want to bring this up to the camera so you can see that a little bit more but look at that can you see that the mica powders the copper in that is so pretty it's so so pretty I'm going to I'll be right back I'm gonna get me a piece of paper so I can burnish this Okay, I'm back, and um, I've got my paper for burnishing, but I think what I want to do is I have, it's called Mother of Pearl, and I think I want just to use a little bit of this on here, if I can get this top off, um, to give it a little more just shine on top.
we'll see. I'm putting a, a pretty light dusting on this because I don't want it to take away from the colors, but I just want to give it a little more oomph on the surface, a little more pearlescent, I think. A little more shimmer, a little more shine, right? There's nothing wrong with a little more, but I will say you need to rub it in. You need to rub it in. And when I go to do uh, here in a minute, when I go to burnish it, I'll burnish it even more. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. And then after it bakes and we put a, sh um, a coating on it, it'll just seal it in even more. And like I said, I'm just making just a really light. And I'm doing it because I think it really makes it look more pearlized, like maybe uh, abalone would be. I don't know. I'm just, we're going to see how this turns out. Okay. And again, this is called Mother of Pearl Resin Pearling Powder. Now, this is for resins, but I think it's just like a mica powder. We'll see. I just, I like this. Okay. So, give it, we're just giving a little more oomph. And I got that the other day because I wanted to try it. Okay, so again, I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to pull it up and reposition it just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that. If you can see that pretty shiver. Wow, I like that. All right. So I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to take one of these, these are actually bath bombs, and I'm just going to do it like this. I don't have my steel soap thing with me, so we're just going to do it like this and burnish it in. Make sure it has a smooth... Get a little more right here where my okay. All right. Okay. I think that's good. So, we're going to grab us some cutters. Valentine's Day is coming up. I think I'm going to use this. This is called... Um, this cutter is a oval, oval. It's an oval teardrop. And I kind of like it. Oval teardrop and that's what it looks like okay and I'm just gonna look on here and try to find a find a piece that I really ooh, I like that a uh, piece I like and I think I'm gonna make we're gonna do we're gonna do a uh, necklace a necklace and some earrings. So, actually, I like that. So, we're just going to use this, went straight down. Okay. 
Um, I want some earrings. I think maybe this for some earrings. Um, I don't know if I want them that size or this size, smaller size. I think I'm going to go with this next size down. I think I like that size better. I'll go right here. And then I'm going to go right next to it. Right there. All right. All right. Um... I still have plenty more, so let's see what else I can do. I have a butter. Ooh, see if I can do my butterfly. I love butterflies. I got a butterfly, and I also have a heart. But we're gonna do the butterfly thing. Uh, these are real reasonable. This was ninety nine cents butterflies at um, Hobby Lobby, so you can't. You really can't beat that. All right, so let me see where I want to go with this. Oh, I think I like that maybe. All right, I'm going to do this here with my big butterfly. All right, and then we're going to do... I think that's the smallest butterfly. We'll do a couple of these. Right. Let's see. Get some. Uh, do that right there. I can get two, I think, out of that. Oops. I don't want to cut into my other thing here. All right. I'm going to have to burnish that because I... Got too close to my other cut. Plus, I was on the wrong side of the cutter, so that didn't help. All right. Um, let's do go this away just a little bit, and we'll do one there, and one right here make sure I don't get into that one right there okay yep right there and again all right so uh, I can, looks like I can do a couple more. So we're going to do, we've got our butterfly. Um, I wonder if I can do, I'm going to take this, I'm going to burnish it up here. And I'm going to see if I can't take maybe a heart out of that. And we'll do a heart as well. A big heart and two baby hearts. <clears throat> so when I come back, let's see if I can get my big one in here. Mm, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Uh, okay, so I'm back. And I have... Um, so I have pulled little mini cutters out. This is a heart. Um, this is like a leaf, but I, I'm going to do something different with that. Uh, this is sort of like a, a drop, oval looking drop. We're going to do something different with that. And this is a circle that I have. Okay, and these are all mini cutters. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the heart and I'm going to do, punch out a couple of these. Um, see, I think I'll go over here. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to pull this up and get the clay pieces 
that away. I don't take a chance on cutting my pieces I have here. So here's my, and we'll clean them up in a minute. Here's my butterfly. Okay, that's part of the scraps. This is our... rounded oval. Here's our heart. And we'll look at them a little bit closer in a minute. Um, there's the oval. Here's a butterfly. Again, some scrap. This is a heart. A heart. A scrap over here. This is, and I need to clean it up a little bit. Okay, this is the oval looking one. And here is the other butterfly that needs to be cleaned up as well. So what I'm going to do, where did my butterfly go? This one. I need to cut him out a little bit better because he's there. And we'll clean him up a little bit here in a minute. So there's my butterflies. Okay, and here's my scraps. So with these scraps, I'm going to cut out two hearts. And what I'm going to do with the hearts, let's see, can I make that one? No, that ain't going to work. We'll do this one. Yeah, we'll do this one. Heart right there. Okay. And another heart right here. And I try and... I try to utilize all my scraps, so I don't have a collection of scraps. So, anyway, here's two hearts, and we'll put them over here with this. I'll tell you in a minute what we're going to do with those. Um, so, I've used that. Then, I'm going to use this, and what I'm going to do, this is, I'm going to use this with our ovals, because I'm going to shape it myself here in a minute and cut it. So, I'm going to cut two of these out. There's one and two. So there's that one and this one. So I have those two. Then I'm going to cut a couple of these. See how I can get this on here. That's almost big enough that it's not. Mm. Let's just go over here. We'll do two of these. There's one. And two. Now, let me pull this up. I'm going to get all the, these pieces. I'm going to set them aside. We'll work with those, and I'll probably do that after we get off of here. Okay, so I have, what I've done is I want to put, these are going to be that, my earrings, right? And then I've cut out these small ones because I want these little small pieces Okay, so here's my earring, and it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to hang like that, if you can tell. Okay, let's do this. Put it on a piece of paper here. So you can see it a little bit better. And that's going to be my earring. I'm going to probably put this on a post, and it's going to, this is going to be a dangle coming down from that okay so that's what I'm doing with the hearts 
and I'll need to clean those up. I'm not going to clean them up. You've seen me clean up clay before. You just take your finger and clean around the edges. All right, and then the, so that's my heart. Then the these two pieces, I'm going to shape them. I'm going to do a little bit of shape myself and make them sort of the shape of this, um, these pieces. So we've got a rounded top, or do I want to do, you know what? I think I'll leave them like they are because, let me show you, here's my earrings. And I think it's going to look good. That will be my earring right there. So I think I'll leave that. I was going to cut that bottom part off. Or I can do it this way. But I think I like this going up there like that. I think that's the way I'll put it. So here are those for those earrings. And my butterfly, I want to do something a little bit different. This is a, like a leaf shape. Um, but I don't want it quite so big. So I am going to manipulate the smaller piece. Um, and I think the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to manipulate it in a way where I can do, we'll go this way, cut that side off a little bit. And we're going to go this way. And it kind of looks like a diamond, but I'm just going to, now I'm going to take my finger and just round this off a little bit. And that. Okay. And I'm going to take, I'll bring this up so you can see this. So that it it might end up being just a bead that dangles from there instead of the earpiece but there's that all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to turn this off um i will come back after everything has been baked uh, i'll clean everything up i'll bake it i'll come back and then we'll put some pieces together uh, i might resin a couple pleat pieces so that we can go ahead and put everything together. So I'll come back. You'll see everything uh, put together when we come back. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Let me know what you think about the new camera angle and if that seems to help. I'm going to get all this cleaned up and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. I came back to show you uh, real quick how I let me pull this up I haven't rolled it yet but I have just stuck my pieces together my leftovers okay this is what it looks like so far and this is the back side of it now I'm gonna I stuck them kind of all together I pushed them together like this okay and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the roller and I'm going to roll it out a little bit. See if I can get them to mesh together just a little bit more. Okay. And we're going to make a couple more pieces out of this. There's a, there's a crack or a hole over here, so I'm going to try to get it mushed up the best I can. And all I did was take the scraps that I had and just lay them up against each other.
Okay. And this is what I have right here. Okay, I'm going to smooth it out a little bit, and we're going to make a couple pieces from this. And I'll show you, uh, when I come back, um, I will show you what those pieces, those separate pieces, looked like. I just wanted to come back and show you that. So, you don't have waste. I mean, you really don't. And you can make, just stick it together like this and make something really pretty out of it. So, um, I will, when I get these baked, I'll come back and show you what we have. All right, thanks. Bye.